Man who leaked billionaires' tax returns to expose unfair system given five years in prison. Charles Littlejohn exposed the crimes of the ultra wealthy. Now, this was a story that was near and dear to my heart because it uh, showed a man who was working class, who worked for the IRS, who got the feeling that uh, the system was unfair and decided to do something about it where everybody wanted to know what Donald Trump's tax returns were and people really critical of billionaires and the, and the money that they have and how they're storing it in offshore accounts, the Panama Papers and what it what they released saying that there was all these shell companies and tax havens and, you know, all over the world, rich people drug cartels, billionaires, real estate moguls, all funneling tax, their tax, stuff where they should be paying their taxes, funneling their money into tax havens. And um, this guy wanted to expose what these people paid a year in tax, in income tax, federal income tax, stuff like that. And they caught him. I think he even pled guilty. So I'll read a bit, little bit about the, the, the story of Charles Littlejohn, American hero. Um, Charles Littlejohn, a former IRS contractor, is no criminal. He is a hero who has shown light on the true criminals in our society, the ultra-wealthy tax dodgers. Little John's courageous actions in leaking confidential tax information to news outlets in the New York Times and ProPublica have uh, revealed the shocking extent to which the rich, richest Americans exploit loopholes and shady accounting tricks to avoid paying their fair share. Now, these revelations at the Je was it Jacobin article rightly states um, would spark meaningful changes in the tax code in a functioning democracy. So. Uh, there was an article in Jacobin. I don't know how to say that right. I only say it. Uh, we're just close to Jacobin. Jacobin. Um, left wing outlet, whatever. Yeah, um, sort of. Wrote, <laughs> sort of. Is it, does it lean all different ways? They're lib. They're libs. I've seen liberals. Okay. Well, there you go. It's like The Economist, right? Yeah. I can't hardly t tell some of these news organizations apart anymore. Um, they wrote an article that said, you know, under normal circumstances, this sort of revelation should have sparked some kind of change. And it really hasn't. It didn't do anything. And it, it did tell us a lot of all, what we already knew. But the dude risked his life and his freedom to do it. So instead, the Biden administration has chosen to viciously prosecute little John, sentencing him up to five years in prison for his quote unquote crime of informing the public. Uh, this is a disgraceful and cowardly move from old sleepy Joe. It lays bare that the government's true allegiance is not to the people, but to the wealthy elite who, of course, as we all know, pull the strings. Little John's disclosures enabled groundbreaking reporting that exposed how billionaires like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and President Trump pay lower effective tax rates than their working class employees. Or sometimes they don't pay taxes at all. And that's the real scandal here, not Little John's actions, but the rampant tax evasion. You even have the billionaire, Warren Buffett, talking about how he is upset. He's so bothered by the fact that his assistant, and his secretary has to pay a higher tax rate than he does. Well, you can complain about it all you like, but you could definitely start paying your fair share, Mr. Buffett. He's like 90 years old. He's going to kick the bucket here soon anyway. He could just pay, or he could like use the same apparatuses that he uses to lobby government employees or lobby for policy that benefits his company. He could lobby for better tax rates, but he doesn't do that either. It's like, instead, he's diverting all of his wealth into some kind of foundation that's going to shield it from taxes even after he's dead for his children. Just like all those other billionaires who said, oh, I'm actually donating 99% of my wealth. It's like, no, you're putting in a tax shelter so your kids continue to have it for generations after you die. Like, you're not fooling anyone, you dumb piece of shit. 
Yeah. Isn't it a shame? Isn't it a shame? Because they, they all want to pretend, well, like I'm cheating at this game and it's a shame that there's this loophole in the game, but I'm just going to cheat because it's there. Mm-hmm. So, but you should really fix the loophole though. Like, what we'll, we'll just stop cheating. No, no, I can't do that because anything that can be done should be done. So I'm just going to do it, you know. Um, as the Freedom of the Press Foundation rightly argues, whistleblowers like Little John, who act out of conscious, uh, conscience uh, to expose government and corporate wrongdoing, are furthering democracy, not actually attacking it. Look, they take enormous personal risks to inform the public and hold the powerful to some kind of accountability. He should be celebrated, not punished. Um, and the five-year sentence, I mean, come on, this harsh sentence imposed... It's a travesty of justice. It's a clear message that the powers that be will viciously retaliate against anyone who dares to challenge the status quo and reveal the crimes of the elite. Um, But, you know, this guy will be in jail for a while. He'll come out a hero. There's a GoFundMe people can go and, you know, uh, donate to him. As he's in prison, he'll get some commissary. But when he comes out, I'll be glad to have him on the show. I'll, we're going to be the first to interview him. He'll, maybe he'll get only get away with two and a half years. We're hoping for the best. But if you do uh, feel like going, giving money to Charles Little John for what he did, his service, go check him out and uh, go donate to his um, his GoFundMe. I think it is um, greatly appreciated. All right, Mike. So you ready for the 10 shocking statistics about billionaires and how they rig the system? All right. So here's the deal. The wealth of the UK billionaires has skyrocketed about 1,000% between 1990 and 2022 and has ballooned to be around $600 billion total. So that's not a stable society there. Um, The number of billionaires in the UK exploded from just 15 in 1990 to 177 in 2022 and it you know it's funny it has systematically coincided with the decline of western civilization i wonder if there's a correlation there. <laughs> nah nah uh, between 20 between 2020 and 2022 billionaire wealth in the uk increased by almost 150 billion um due to the government efforts to prop up the economy and the free money that was swirling around uh, of course the 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 ones that have the money use the money that they have as collateral to get a loan to buy something on debt and turn around and flip it for a profit. So if you don't have capital, you just don't have anything in the United States. You're a slave. Um, globally, the richest 1% own now 43% of all financial assets. Now that's scary. Come on, guys. That's mm-hmm. scary. Even right wing people should be upset by that. The richest 1% own 43% of all the financial assets. A billionaire is the principal shareholder or runs 7 out of 10 of the world's largest corporations. If just 10% of businesses in the U.S. were employee-owned, it could double the wealth share at the bottom 50% in medium black household wealth. Again, we have no hope in taking back the power from monopolized control of everything that's vital. Not too much that can't be bought on Amazon or the housing market can be controlled by a few different companies or car companies who now have figured out that why charge people a thousand bucks for a car? Now now you go and you have to take out a loan to buy a used car now, which blew my mind. Like you can't even go and get in a thousand dollar van anymore. No. It's it's crazy. Um, they, they have figured out what humans need to survive. They've monopolized those things and jacked up the prices. They say, well, what are you going to do? You need it to live. Mm-hmm. They did it with insulin. You need insulin to live. And there's nothing more awesome for a capitalist to have something where you know you're going to have repeat customers. Because people don't tend to like to want to just die a horrible coma, uh, insulin coma death, you know? Yeah. They'd rather actually just take the medicine and try to be well. No, they call it an inelastic market. That in healthcare. Right. 
Right. I told you last time I had a friend who was rationing his diabetes, had a fucking heart attack, almost died. Uh, sick world. Um, corporations have waged a war on taxation with many mega companies paying next to nothing in taxes, as even as they make record profits. Um, this is another reason why the decline of Western civilization is in full swing. It's because that is money that we needed dearly uh, for society that's lost tax revenue. Uh, lower and middle income countries are set to pay $500 million per day in interest and debt payments to their creditors between now and 2029. Um, Oxfam predict, predicts that the world could have its first trillionaire in just a decade, even as poverty is growing globally. So Oxfam is predicting that poverty will increase and rich people, billionaires' share of the wealth will also increase and i think we got to get the guillotine out sharpen it up clean it get it make sure do a couple practice get a melon put a gourd in there practice on it really right put I mean, a but there's a couple in innocent there. ones there's like there's a that's the whole problem is like too many people think that there is a good rich person there's a good business owner uh maybe even a small business owner it's like no even those are bad um you know i made a post earlier today i was just like ironically cheering on mass shootings in the u.s and saying that oh look a bunch of dead fascists like literal fascist infighting because there are kids out here uh, i find them in my comment sections all the time when i say that it's actually good that russia is beating back the neo-nazi militias in ukraine or that china is going to help other countries liberate themselves or that the dpa rk is like shifting uh, shipping weapons to people in gaza um, and they say that that's just inter-imperialist infighting they they just laugh at like American soldiers and Russian soldier, soldiers killing each other in Ukraine and say it's just imperialist infighting. It's like, well, if we're going to take that logic, let's look at the U.S. for what it is, say that it is the new fascist country, and that all the citizens are contributing to that fascist empire with their labor and their purchases and their consumption every day. Um, maybe they're doing a little bit to offset it. Maybe they're donating to some charity. Maybe they're organizing. But it's obviously not enough to stop or even put a dent in that fascist imperialist project. So if I say, that a bunch of uh, mass shootings happening in the U.S. or random crimes, or random murders or whatever is a bunch of fascists infighting um, and it offends a bunch of people. All they're doing is showing their American nationalism. They're showing that they don't actually believe the things they say once you apply different national labels to these things. It's not about the class conflicts. It's not about what's actually being done materially. It's just about the borders and who comes from where. And I can't abide by that anymore. I can't do it. Um, so I had a lot of people just getting mad about that. But it's just to make the point, and I was saying later in a comment section explaining it, it's like there are no innocent Americans. There are no Americans who are Marxists in practice who are doing anywhere near enough to counter the imperialist forces. And so if I cheer on the anti-imperialists in some way, that's we should be anti-nationalist and anti-imperialist first and foremost. And if we're not going to recognize that core contradiction, then what are we really even talking about? Yeah, uh, and and the, do the people that have their f hands on the wheel mostly that might have a chance uh, at destroying these imperialist forces are the countries who are being imperialized first and foremost. But uh, we can do plenty. We can do plenty to try and speak up for those people and make wise decisions in our everyday life that keeps us unassociated from the atrocities in the world. Look at your life, look at where you go, who you hang out with, and what you consume, and, and what your goals are in life, and see if they align with the morality that, that you're really wanting to preach, and say, do you want to live in a shitty world, or do you want to live in a good world where people do the right thing, and people don't screw each other, and people don't enslave, and torture, and kill, and burn each other's eyeballs with hot coat hangers? It's, it's not that hard, really. Um, but and billionaires shouldn't exist. And uh, there's a comment there. It's, billionaires shouldn't exist. Fully agree. As soon as you have billionaires in your society, you can no longer have the luxury of saying that you live in a democracy because those people have so much influence, it outweighs any of the voting that can happen when they can sway public opinion, sway public policy, give, uh, you know give quite generously to political contributions and political candidates you do not own, you don't live in a democracy if billionaires exist 
and yet we pretend like we do. Um, but you know, how does the how does this tax system that we have now that's completely broken, where taxation is theft, man, and we're not going to pay for any firemen or parks or police or national defense or regulators? Um, well, the current tax rate in America is totally different than the progressive taxation of the rich during the 1950s. Back then, the marginal tax rate on the wealthiest individuals was as high as 91%. Billionaires were, were taxed in 1950 at 90%. Amazing. And this was a time that the government recognized that they needed to ensure the most prosperous members of society contributed their fair share to the collective well-being, and that the other people on bottom received the benefits from creating that wealth. And if, if you ask me, and I think history agrees, the 1950s, apart from the Jim Crow and stuff, was one of the most stable times in American history where there was a lot of wealth and a lot of uh, infrastructure built and a lot of cool things happen. We finally got the gumption to start the space program and everything like that during this time. It's a good thing. Taxation is a good thing. It just depends on where it goes. And it's we have a hands-off approach to government now where we don't have any control over what these people do, but there was a time when we did and that we could actually control the people that were coming in and the people we voted for and everything like that. But we have lost that thanks to rich people, billionaires, buying influence, changing public policy, lobbying, stuff like that. Um, we should have always been watching it and trying to beat it away. But it's inevitable that it keeps coming back, coming back. Just the one um, last thing, the Chris, on that last point you just made about the lobbying, it goes a, one level deeper than that, where people genuinely believe that what good for the rich is also good for them because they are a business owner themselves. They have like a mom and pop shop or they have someone in a small business like they dog groom or whatever it is. And they literally believe it's not just the lobbying and the indoctrination. They truly believe that what is good for the rich people will also be good for them. And I have a point to go off for that later on, but I'll let you finish your article. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, no problem. No, I appreciate the, uh, the comment because I, it all ties together. Um, but look, Right now, that's the tax rate for billionaires stands at 37%. But as we know from Panama Papers and, and everything else, they don't actually pay. They pay more about 1% tax rate because of trusts and assets, keeping it in assets, keeping it overseas, et cetera, et cetera, creating shell companies. Um, but the the tax rate itself, when and if they do pay, is only 37%, which is a lot um, – similar to what working class people pay. Um, in stark contrast, many other developed nations maintain much higher tax rates on their wealthiest citizens. For instance, Denmark, the top marginal tax rate in Denmark is 55%, not 37%. And in France, it's also 55%. Now, these countries uh, have recognized the importance of ensuring that those with the greatest means should contribute accordingly to funding the essential public services and reduction of in inequality. Um, that's it. That's the article. Uh, couldn't agree more. I mean, and that's the thing. It's billionaires also do not and cannot say that they're patriotic. Because if you were patriotic, then you would abide by the democratic principles of your country, and you would allow everybody to have their fair say, and you wouldn't be so arrogant and egotistical to think that you and you alone are the one who gets to decide uh, the fate of humanity simply because you absconded with the most fun tokens. Mm -hmm.